shark bite. Some people say that it's the future of FPV. It's higher resolution than analog, but less expensive and less disruptive than DJI. You can still use shark bite while flying around all your friends. Are you one of those people? If not, then I don't know why you're watching this video because this is the shark bite setup video. This video is for if you have already bought shark bite and you need a complete start to finish guide for getting shark bite working with your quadcopter, including the new canvas mode update. Oh yeah, that's in here too. I'm Joshua Bardwell and you're gonna learn something today. <laughs> The first thing that we got to do in setting up SharkBite is wire up the SharkBite video transmitter to the flight controller. And there are two or three main things we need to think about when doing that. The first is power. So we're going to need ground and then the SharkBite video transmitter takes between 2S and 6S input voltage. So that's going to be easy to get on pretty much any quadcopter that we're using. You might ask the question of, if you have like a 10 volt regulator or a 12 volt voltage regulator, should you use it versus using VBAT? And I don't know that there's a definitive answer to that. As long as the regulator is actually rated for the current that the video transmitter is going to pull, then you should probably be okay. And you should get a little bit cleaner video and a little bit more protection from voltage spikes. But these are designed to run off of VBAT, so there shouldn't be any problem running them off of VBAT if that's what you decide to do. Next, we have the RX and the TX wires, and those are going to go to any unused UART, any TX and RX pad on your flight controller. And those are going to be used for mm, a number of things. The main thing that they're going to be used for, though, is the on-screen display. With the most recent firmware updates, SharkBite supports a feature of Betaflight called Canvas Mode. And Canvas Mode lets the flight controller draw essentially arbitrary things on the screen. So anything that the flight controller could put on an analog OSD, it can put in the SharkBite OSD, including drawing the menu and, and basically everything. So that is definitely a feature that you're gonna want. Now the video transmitter that we're gonna be working with in this video is the TX5 S.1. And this video transmitter outputs 200 milliwatts and it has a 25 millimeter toothpick style mounting. And we're using a toothpick flight controller in this particular build. That's why I have selected this one. There's another video transmitter, the TX5 M.1, which is a two board solution with 20 millimeter mounting and 500 milliwatts of output power. That one has the same solder point as this one, but you're probably not going to be using it uh, because it has some durability issues. The two board, the, the, the connection between the two boards creates some durability problems when it's crashed in real life. And, and I'm not convinced that they're going to continue manufacturing that. If you've got that though, uh, it'll wire up the same. The other one is the TX5 R.1, which is their new racing video transmitter. Uh, this one has 20 millimeter M3 mounting with gummies uh, and outputs 200 milliwatts. The big difference with the TX5 R.1 though is that it has smart audio connection as well. We will be go over how to wire that up and how to set that up, but it won't be on the video transmitter that I'm using for this particular build. So here is a pinout diagram for the flight controller we're going to be working with, the iFlight Beast F7. And what we need to identify is, first of all, how we're going to power the flight controller. And we could do that using these uh, pins on this plug, ground, and VBAT. Uh, we need to identify one UART for the TX and RX wires, the MSP connection. And that could be this, T2 and R2. and then. If you have the TX5R.1, you'll also need to identify one separate UART TX pad for the smart audio connection. And that could be any one of these. For example, we've got R1 and T1 here. We could choose to use T1. We've got uh, T4 here. We could choose to use that. Any UART TX pad that isn't otherwise occupied. Um, any UART that isn't occupied. So if you're using uh, RX1 for SBUS, receiver, you can't use TX1 for smart audio. That, that wouldn't work. Each UART can only have one function. Uh, it's worth pointing out in this situation, what I might try to do is remap the R3 pin 
You can't remap a UART RX to a UART TX. That usually doesn't work. But you usually can remap a UART to be Soft Serial. And Soft Serial is a software version of a UART. Um, I might try to remap R3 as Soft Serial UART TX. And that would probably let me get all of my necessary UARTs in this one little plug, and that would certainly be convenient. Now, if you're using the TX5 R.1, the good news is that you can have a completely solder-free installation. So the TX5 R.1 has this plug here, which is the power slash UART connector, and it comes with a wire. And that wire has a plug on one end, and so you could just plug it in and then cut the other ends off and solder them to your flight controller if you prefer. But if your flight controller has a plug like this one that might work, it comes with a, a bare SH-1.0 connector and you can just plug those pin wires in in the correct order for your flight controller and just plug it in. Unfortunately, the TX5.1 that I'm working with doesn't have a plug and it's solder only. So that's what we're gonna do. And I always double check when I come to the TX and RX pads. TX on one goes to RX on the other. And I just want to make sure I get that right. So this goes ground, power, RX is the next one. The next one will be RX. The Beast H7 or F7 is power, ground, TX. So that is correct. The third one is RX on the VTX and TX on the flight controller, and that's correct. So we just come straight across here. All right, so next we're gonna take the camera and we're gonna install the MIPI cable on the camera if it isn't already. Which way does it go? I think it goes like that. And just, does it go like this? Oh, there you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just pops on. Be gentle because it, it can damage the MIPI connector. And it is going to pop down onto the uh, video transmitter the same way. Yeah. Just like that. And we also are going to need an antenna. Never power this guy up without an antenna. Well, for the time being, this will do. It's just a little dipole antenna that came with a TBS Unify. As long as it's a 5 gigahertz antenna, you'll, you'll be okay. It's not the one I'll use on the final uh, build, but it'll do for now. And the next thing to do is to power it up. See if it fries. Oh, hasn't fried yet. We got a red status LED here. Bear in mind that SharkBite will not function if there's not a camera installed. It's not like an analog VTX where it'll just power up and operate normally. So, uh, yeah. Oh. And we have image. We have image in the goggles. It's working. That's fantastic. Now that it's wired up and basically functioning, we can move on to the software configuration over on the computer. The next thing that I'm gonna do is update the firmware on the goggles. And there's a fair chance that your goggles or your module already have the latest firmware, especially if you're using the Scout HD, which just came out. But I'm going to go through the steps anyway, because at some point in the future, that may not be true. And I want to make absolutely sure that my VTX has this firmware, which supports canvas mode. That's the feature that lets the full Betaflight OSD work with SharkBite. That is a must-have feature. Uh, the web page that I'm at is here. I'll put a link down in the video description. I'm going to go down to the Scout HD FPV goggles zip file. I'm going to download that zip file and open. Here's the contents of the zip file. The zip file manager I'm using is called 7-Zip. If you're on Windows and you don't have a zip file manager, it's free. You can download it. Here's the website, 7-zip.org, or just Google 7-Zip. And then I am going to put an SD card in my machine, and I'm going to take the contents of this zip file and just drag it over to the root folder of the SD card. Next, we're gonna insert the SD card into the goggles or the receiver module, and then we're gonna power them. It, I usually shoot my videos in one go because I know it's distracting if I change appearance in the middle of a video, but this time I had another video, I had to pause this one for like a week. So that's, yeah. Then we're gonna power them up. And we should see, yes, the firmware update process 
is occurring. Now this is going to take some time, so just let that sit and don't interrupt it or bad things will happen. Uh, also, uh, I, one thing I discovered as I was just now doing this is that if you use a l larger than 32 gig SD card, the goggles won't read it. Yeah, that's a common limitation of some file systems that read SD cards. Uh, it can tell that the goggle, that the SD card is inserted and removed, but it won't actually do the firmware update or read the card. So 32 gig or smaller. When the update is done, the goggles will say firmware update a successfully repower VRX now. So we're gonna repower the goggles or the receiver and you're good to go. The next thing to do is to update the firmware on the receiver. And in order to do that, you're gonna need this little cable. Now this cable comes with the module or the Scout HD goggles. Um, and they're updated from the goggles themselves. Here on the side of the Scout HD is the firmware update uh, plug. That same plug is on the bottom of the VRX, the receiver module, if you have that. You're just gonna plug that in there. And there is a matching plug here on the video transmitter. You're gonna plug in the VTX. And then to update the firmware for the VTX, you're gonna do the same thing. Take the SD card over to the computer, download the appropriate zip file. There's gonna be a separate zip file for each of the three receivers. Put the contents of that zip file on the SD card. In this case, it's only gonna be one file, and whereas before there were several when we did the receiver. Put the contents of the zip file on the SD card, insert the SD card into the goggles and power them up. And we will get another updating dialog. There you go, firmware updated successfully. Just like that. Next, we're gonna do the Betaflight configuration for the SharkBite VTX. And the first thing that I think we should do is set up canvas mode so that we can get the full Betaflight OSD in our goggles. DJI can't do that, not yet. Step up, DJI. I should say that uh, I'm just following along with Fat Shark's excellent user manual for SharkBite. I'll put a link to that in the video description, of course, but I'll step through it as well because you, that's why you're here, right? Of course. And what we're gonna start with is by remembering the UART number that we connected the TX and RX lines from the video transmitter to. So in our case, that's UART number two. Okay, then we're going to go to the CLI in Betaflight. You do need to be in Betaflight 4.2 or newer. If you're on an older version of Betaflight for some reason, or if you're using iNav or Emu Flight, what I'm about to show you, well, the exact thing I'm going to show you won't work. For all I know, Emu Flight does support canvas mode in some other way, but these are Betaflight specific instructions. And what we need to type is set OSD underscore display port underscore device equals MSP. And set display port underscore MSP underscore serial equals. And then we're going to take the UART number, which is UART2, and we're going to subtract one from it because programmers don't like to count from one, they like to count from zero. So instead, UART number two is one. Programmers, what can you do? So uh, equals one, and then save. Next, we're going to go to the ports tab, and we're going to go to UART2. And we're going to enable the configuration slash MSP option. But you see, my flight controller already has Serial RX on UART2, and we need to disable that. And if there's anything else in any of these spots, we also need to disable that. If you try to put two things on the same UART, the ports tab will it'll actually just reset itself completely, which may not be ideal. So UART2 has MSP enabled. And then we're going to go to the configuration tab and make sure that... OSD is enabled and it is. After that, we can go to the OSD tab and we can set up some OSD elements. And, and in fact, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna set up my standard Betaflight OSD. My standard Betaflight OSD is, here we go, OSD configuration for analog. Let's just go and paste that right the heck in. This is how I set up my OSD on all my quads. I just copy paste the CLI commands that relate to the OSD. It's everything starting with set OSD underscore from your config dump. And then you'll see my OSD is ready to go. And here we are in the OSD tab. It's all sort of ready to go. Aft name, JB. Yeah. 
And then here we'll power up the quad and uh, what do we got? Now, if you're using the TX5 R.1 video transmitter or any future video transmitter that SharkBite may release, there's one more thing you can do, and that is set up so smart audio to let the flight controller remote control the VTX. And this may confuse you at first because we can control the VTX using the SharkBite system. So if we want to change band or channel, we can do that using our controller sticks. So isn't that exactly what smart audio does yes but smart and if that's all you wanted then you wouldn't need smart audio you see betaflight has the vtx function and what the vtx function lets you do is use an aux channel to manage the vtx not your sticks going into a menu but literally you could just change channels or power just by pressing one of these buttons or by turning one of these knobs or by flicking one of these switches uh, some people think that's pretty cool and they really want it. If that's you, then you need to set Smart Audio up. I've got a whole separate video about setting up the VTX function and I'll link it down in the video description. It's using an analog video transmitter, but the process is the same for SharkBike. To set up Smart Audio, the first thing you're going to do is grab this VTX table from the... Um, there's a separate user manual for the 5R.1 VTX. This info is not in the regular SharkBite user manual. Again, I'll put this stuff down in the video description so you can grab it from there. Uh, we're going to copy this VTX table. We're going to go into the CLI. And we're just going to paste that in. Boom. And then back here in the ports tab, whichever UART you connected the video transmitter smart audio wire to, you're going to, oh, here, let's, this has IRC tramp enabled by default. We're going to disable that. We don't need more than one. I don't even know if you can have more than one VTX control enabled, but let's say we connected that to UART3 TX. We would go UART3 and we would change here to VTX TBS Smart Audio and we would save and reboot. And then here in the video transmitter tab, we should see device ready. Yes. Oh, well, the video transmitter needs to be powered up. At that point, you should see device ready. Yes. And you should be able to change the channel and the output power using these controls as well. Uh, if you set the power to zero, that means that the whole video transmitter will turn off. Again, this is useful for if you've, the, the, the video transmitters will overheat if you power them on without airflow. So you never want to leave them powered on without airflow for very, for more than a couple of minutes. If it, if you can possibly avoid it, if you do need to have it plugged in, you can basically shut it off by setting the power level to zero. Next, let's go over some of the menus of the SharkBite system and some key options that you're going to want to be aware of and potentially change. And the first thing to show you is that you can enter the SharkBite system menu by pushing the sticks down and to the inside, and you'll get this menu. I should let you know, if you are using the race video transmitter and you have set up smart audio, you cannot access this menu. Most of the things in this menu are accessible via the Betaflight video transmitter tab, and we'll take a look at that in a second. But there are a couple options that are only accessible from this menu. So if you needed to access them, you would have to temporarily disable Smart Audio in the Ports tab, make your changes, and then put it back again. Uh, and the first two options that we'll take a look at are the channel and power. Duh. Uh, we can change those options. Oh, there we go. By using the right stick, <laughs> uh, we're going to change to channel 8, and we can change the power. On this one, it goes 25 to 200. That's it. The next option is LP mode, low power mode. And what LP mode does is before the video transmit, before the quadcopter arms, the video transmitter will be in a low power mode, uh, like a one milliwatt mode. Actually, it's 25 milliwatts. Sorry about that. And then when you arm, it'll go to full power. So do you see how we're seeing a bunch of like speckles on the screen right now? That's because we're in low power mode. It's that's that we should, we're only at like one milliwatt. Um, low power mode is a great idea because these video transmitters have a real problem with overheating. And so if it's sitting there at 25 or God forbid, 200 milliwatts, while you're waiting for like a race to start or something, it can, it can literally in extreme cases damage itself. So you don't want that. Um, pit mode. 
uh, the, the uh, video transmitter can be configured to power up in pit mode. It can be in either pit one milliwatt or it can be in pit zero milliwatt. And in pit zero milliwatt, it will literally be powered down until you arm the quad. Let me demonstrate that for you real quick. So I'm gonna save and exit here. And now I'm gonna power cycle the system. Hold on, unplug, replug. Okay, so the quad is the quad is awake, but the shark bite video transmitter is completely powered down. Literally, it's just not even on. Now, when I go to arm the quad, here we go. Do I need to be out of now when I go to arm the quad? Come on, shark bite. You're making me look bad. And now I arm the quad. Ah, oh, that's how it's supposed to work. I don't know what was happening there. Thank you to Ryan Quellett for helping me figure out what happened here. What he says is that the SharkBite module was auto scanning and I didn't give it long enough to auto scan around to the channel that I was on. What he suggests doing is turning off auto scan in the SharkBite module menu and then manually setting the channel. And then as soon as you arm, it'll just come right back because it won't have to search for it. If the throttle is not centered, I forgot about that. If the throttle is not centered, the menu doesn't work. Hmm. The last option to look at is the offset 25 milliwatt option that's used if you're racing and you need to be like right at 25 milliwatts, but not over or the race director will kick you out. You can tweak the output power in 25 milliwatts mode, get out your power meter. Or if the race director says you're over power, then uh, you just, just tweak it, turn it down a little bit. Now, one more thing I wanna show you is that in the SharkBite system, a lot of the cameras that you're going to use, they do not have like a joystick like you would plug into an analog camera. And uh, SharkBite supports digital camera control. You get into digital camera control mode by going center throttle yaw right. Just hold that for a second. It takes a second. You'll know it's worked when the OSD disappears. Uh, you may have done this. A few of you may have done this with analog cameras and it's unreliable. It doesn't work all the time. With SharkBite, it's all digital end to end. So it just works. Once you're in camera control mode and the OSD disappears, pushing center throttle yaw right on the left stick is like clicking the joystick. If you've ever worked with an analog camera, it brings up the menu or it enters the option. And then the right stick down and up moves you through the menu. So we could go to picture adjust and then we could click the joystick. And now we're looking here. We can move these options up and down when we're ready to leave. We go down to return and we click the joystick. Okay. One of the key things to do with this camera, the Foxier Digisite, is to turn the camera ID off. That gets that Foxier logo off the screen. And that's kind of a big deal. So I will exit here. I will, doesn't matter, I will not save. And then to get out of camera control mode, you go center throttle, yaw left. And now we're out of camera control mode and we can do whatever we need to do. We can fly the quad. And that's gonna bring us to the end of the video. I hope by now that you have a much better idea of how to set up, configure, and get the most out of your SharkBite system. If you've got any questions, Leave them in the video, leave them down in the comments, or as this video gets older, uh, YouTube doesn't always show me the comments. You can always email me. Uh, I'd always do my best to help. I'm so excited about the SharkBite system. I cannot wait for SharkBite to release their upcoming one watt video transmitter, which I hope will finally give SharkBite the range and penetration that I think a real uh, FPV system needs. But for now, I'm super excited to get this quad out in the air and see how this Oh My God 250 that I'm building flies. It doesn't look pretty yet. I haven't put it together. If you want to see how a sub 250 gram five inch flies, I'll put a link to my review of this quad. I reviewed the bind and fly and I'll put a link to the build video if you want to build one yourself. Go check it out. I think SharkBite is perfect for these little lightweight quads. Better image quality than analog, lighter than DJI. Hmm. Yeah, it's a it's an argument anyway. It's an argument you probably agree with because you're watching a shark bite video. Thank you so much for watching. Happy flying. You guys, I don't know where I am, and I I don't know what's gonna happen, but if I don't make it out of this, I just want to know that you subscribe to my channel. Or maybe join my Patreon or, or click one of click one of these videos I picked out for you. <gasps>